Hey everybody, how's uh, how's it going? Uh, I just wanted to make a, a quick video this morning uh, regarding the Great Guitar Build-Off 2022. I've watched both prior iterations of this competition or contest or whatever you want to call it, and I haven't really actively participated, although two of the guitars that you see here were essentially built during the time of the first two competitions. So I've decided this year that I'm I'm going to I'm going to take part and I guess I'm looking for some advice. Um I'd like to know what people think would be interesting. Should I replicate one of these designs? Um these are all my original shapes. Um or should I go ahead and come up with something completely new? I have a lot of material for making templates. Uh, the shape is the thing for me. That's what I base most of my design philosophy around is the shape of the body. Does it, does it work for a human being? Uh, and does it look cool? So I happen to think that these three guitars do both of those things. I haven't really ever described any of my instruments although I have some brief videos that contain the instruments. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm just going to quickly go through these three guitars, and I'd love to get some feedback about what people think. I'm not going to edit the video. I shoot on the fly, and I just speak off the cuff. So if this is annoying, I'm really, really sorry, but I will go quickly. It's um, a chilly, windy March morning here in the east coast of Canada, and I have lots to do today. So first and foremost, um, let me grab this one. This is the first guitar that I ever completed that I was proud of. And I've made a video of this with no talking. Um, this is called The Wanderer. And I'm sort of flirting with the idea of the brand name Ares. As far as I know, and I've researched this, I don't know of another guitar company just called Ares. I know there are models of guitars by other companies um, with that model name, but not as a brand name. So real quick, Jatoba neck and fretboard, uh, slight multi-scale on this one, culminating in a straight bridge, tone pros locking system, custom made brass, uh, chrome plated hardware there that I made myself, and an ergonomic body design. Uh, that is a little smaller across the width um, than a Les Paul at, at its widest point here. So about 12 and a half, maybe 12 and 3 eighths inches. Uh, one single pickup, volume tone, very simple, very straightforward. I'm going to flip it over. Okay. So on the back here, you can see this is a 7-bolt uh, neck. That's probably overkill. And... Uh, this is a system that I continue to use because it works great. Simple bolts and washers. Uh, nothing too fancy about it. Fairly discreet. Looking at the carving on this, I could probably have done more and gone a bit more uh, in terms of material removal. But as it stands, uh, even the best of those types of systems still leave something wanting unless you're doing like a true neck through. And um, I used a bamboo dinner tray table as a back. So uh, the reason for that is to achieve the thickness that I wanted, and also because the maple body of this guitar, let me flip it over again. Incidentally, there's maple in the neck. Um, this maple body uh, it used to be a very big wooden shelf um, that had some pre-drilled holes, um, angled holes, to mount it to a wall. So this is the Wanderer. Um, I've got a template for this. I've got a neck template for all my guitars. And uh, essentially, if you like that one, you can just uh, comment Wanderer. I'll reproduce that. Different finish, different neck wood. I've got some Jatoba and some Maple and also some wenge. Uh, I'd love to make an all wenge neck. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe with a, 
a contrasting um, flame maple fretboard on top. I have some of that too. So let me get this one off of here. And second guitar here. So this is the, the second guitar that I ever completed. Um, there's no decal on the headstock. Um, the model name for this is an abbreviation called the LDB. And that stands for Little Black Dress because the outline of it does kind of look like a small woman's dress. Probably a little bit silly. I might come up with a different model name for this one. Um, no multi-scale to this. Straight frets. 24 frets in this case. 25 and a half inch scale length. Um, the perimeter of the body is fine. I'm not 100% sure about the carves on this. It was done more as an experiment to see how that faceting would work. And it came off okay. Um, I do have a prototype of this body made simply out of pine um, in another part of the house. I'm not going to go dig it out. Um, and the, the material removal along the margins is a little less extreme. Uh, but this is a very lightweight, very comfortable guitar. So the top on this is plain maple. Just something I got from Home Depot quarter inch thick uh, that I joined together in the center. Uh, it looks a little bit better in person. Um, there is some nice grain here, but my camera is not all that good. Uh, flipping this over. Uh, and this is a good lesson in using what you've got. So again, um, this body minus the top is from the same piece of wood that comprised um, the shelf from the other guitar. It, uh, again, had the pocketed holes in it. That's why there's a, a cap on the top of this guitar. It's simply the fact that on the other instrument, on the Wanderer, I liked the grain pattern a lot better. So I used that for the front, and I capped off the back, covering up the less dramatic grain. Now, this one has a bit more of an extreme situation at the neck joint. Uh, a little more sculpting. Again, it's it's a bit of a nod to trying to be, you know, ergonomic. Uh, I would probably change some things about this in terms of this area right here. I would put a, a much larger round over on this. Um, and I might even go a bit thinner through here, a little less material. It's, it's fairly strat-like in its dimensions. Um, and uh, with respect to that, um, the neck here, uh, this is why I said this is a bit of a lesson in using what you've got. As you can see, there's a clear seam line here. That is a two-piece neck, and that seam um, and the wood surrounding it are both uh, about, I'm going to say, 80 to 100 years old. So... It looks like maple, but it's actually birch. And the it, it came from a piece of furniture. It came from uh, an old desk. So this was the top of the desk. Uh, God knows when it was constructed. I'm assuming it was early part of the 20th century. Uh, I got it off of somebody locally here who was throwing it away. Um, and I saw this one portion where there was a joint, and I thought, well... Why don't I just use that just as an experiment, simply to see what kind of result I would get. Um, the, the lovely thing about this wood is that it was, of course, it's very old, quite dry, um, very, very stable. Um, this neck doesn't move at all. The action is really, really low on this guitar. Um, the fretboard itself is maple. Uh, I just purchased uh, some good... Uh, kiln-dried maple from a local supplier. Nothing dramatic about it. Um, little tiny bit of a mineral streak on that part there. Stainless steel frets on all my guitars. Uh, I don't mess around with that. And I try to use good tuners on both of these instruments. I've got um, Goto 
uh, sorry, is it Goto or Grover? Sorry, <laughs> very professional video, I know. Uh, these are Grover locking tuners. Um, they don't have a thumb wheel. They simply put the string through and you wind it up and it just locks by itself, which is great. They're very stable. Um, Seymour Duncan pickups in both of these guitars. There's a, uh, a set of six hip shot solo bridges on here. I've made a video where I talk about how much I hate them. I'll never use them again. In fact, I started making my own bridge hardware as it stands. And um, so, as I said with the other guitar, I have a template for both of them. I can easily reproduce this, but I could make some variations in terms of how the, the contours are done, uh, obviously the finish, and I'm looking to experiment with other things. I tried to go for finishes that were easy to achieve on these two guitars. The headstock shape will remain the same, although it may get inverted. And um, yeah, I, I like this one a lot. I, I, I play this guitar more than any other that I own, simply because it is so comfy. I'm going to move this and I'm going to put the final one up here. Bear with me for one more second. I have to be a bit careful with this one. It's not completed. Okay. Oops. <laughs> See the... There we go. The knobs fell off. This is just a, a bit of a mock-up, a bit of a dry run. I'm going to grab the other one too and put it back on. Okay. You can skip through all this BS of me pushing the guitars. I won't edit this. So I made a video about this instrument um, a while ago after I had completed the finish and um, I had yet to make the pick guard or no I had made the pick guard but I hadn't put any any pickups in um, again headstock shape is the same this is inverted I like that look a lot on this particular body there's no there's no model name for this or anything no distinction about it uh, it is a pretty big guitar 14 and a half inches across at the widest point, so wider than a Les Paul, uh, wider than a Telecaster, and a little reminiscent of both of those instruments, on purpose, of course. Um, I had these, uh, these DiMarzio pickups in their lovely purple covers uh, kicking around for quite a while now, and um, it looked like an appropriate platform for those pickups to go into. Um, and in the other video, I explained how I made these bridges, uh, they're kind of a riff on the solo bridges by Hipshot. They're just made by me. The saddles are not made by me. They're just um, they're just Fender, Fender stock saddles. Um, but they work. I've had strings on this and it plays pretty good. I haven't even dressed the frets yet, so that's great. Um, the fretboard on this one is some of the Wenge that I have. Uh, processed that into that shape myself, which I do everything by hand, by the way. So <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, give me your thoughts on this. Um, you can just comment red. And for the other one that I just showed you, you can comment L, B, D. Larry Bob Daniel, you know. Uh, this one is a little more of a conservative design, a little more traditional uh, for obvious reasons, because it does call on uh, two of the most iconic shapes in guitar design with a few little quirks here. I'm just going to pull this off. And just remove these so I can flip this over. There's a big swimming pool cavity here. Still have to shave a little material off right there. Pardon me. That's just to accommodate that rear pickup. I didn't quite get that. It's literally a matter of about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or something. Um, the guitar is a lot more red in person. I'm going to flip it over now. The body on this one is... Uh, uh, Karina, uh, but not good looking Karina. That's why it's painted. Nobody, don't freak out. Um, okay, so same bolt on kind of system as before uh, bolts and washers. Um, this is another neck made from that same birch. This is prior to it having finish on it. I'm thinking about doing a matching headstock on this guy. Um, if that's something that you think is cool, let me know. But on this guitar, I believe I'm going to leave the playing portion of the back of the neck completely 
uh, unfinished or maybe just a little bit of wax um, rubbed in to provide a minimal layer of protection. Uh, it's just lovely wood though. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to machine because it's so dry. Uh, you have to be careful about you know, sharp corners. You can see where I've had to tack some layers on here because of blowout. That's a tricky shape to machine anyway. It's a bit of a weird headstock. Um, this one's heavily contoured in the back. So as you can see, there's a bit of a, an arm carve there, and it cuts across the entire body, uh, and it results in a bit of a divot on that side. So um, a little more work goes into this kind of guitar. I'm thinking I want to do something fairly basic. Whatever design um, I choose to go with, I'm probably going to just have a little bit less in terms of embellishment in terms of contours and that kind of thing, or carves. Um, and I, if, I, if I go with reproducing this one, I think I will shrink the body down just a little bit. It is pretty big, and it is kind of heavy. Um, I don't think there's any real problem with a heavy guitar. Um, you know, it's up to the player to decide, right? This one's going to be mine. And as you can see, I'll flip it back over. Um, I'm not against making multi-scale guitars. I think they're great. Um, I, I, can, I can go with either kind. And this one is just uh, kind of calling for it, I think. So um, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Hold on. Get this back down on the floor. I just want to let you know that I have, I have made a seven-string guitar. This is a seven-string neck. That, um, that I produced some time ago. Uh, nice figured maple, um, five plus two headstock. Probably not legal <laughs> to mass produce based on Ernie Ball's claim that they kind of own this concept. However, I wanna point out one thing um, that's a little bit different about it. <clears throat> so here you can see the slots in the nut. And this tuner right here that one is actually for the high E string. So the high E comes off of this slot and goes directly to this tuner. And then the next one over, obviously, is for the B string. It's a little bit of an inside out kind of a concept to the point where um, I had a previous guitar, a six string guitar, with a similar kind of a headstock, uh, four plus two. And uh, I didn't know how to do the wiring, so I took it to somebody to have it wired up. And when they restrung the guitar, restrung the guitar, they got really confused, and they they threaded the B string around the outside. And to me, it was obvious um, how it should go, but uh, it was a little confusing. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to kind of show the beauty of this uh, this maple that I do have. Um, you know, it's just lovely on edge, and and I made this one as a single piece neck. What I should have done to really uh, get the most out of the wood grain would have been to stack them together so that I would have gotten that look all the way along the back of the neck. Uh, the body of this seven string guitar I've cast it off. Um, wasn't happy with it. It was too big. It's in another video. Uh, too big, too heavy. Um, and I'm currently uh, restoring, or I should say modifying an old West Tone guitar body to go with this neck. I'm not going to show that on camera right now because it's it's not really close to being done. It's going to be kind of cool. Again, this one's just going to be for me. Uh, building guitars has been like a long-term project um, in terms of teaching myself how to do it. I'm completely self-taught aside from watching great builders like Ben, of course, and others on, on YouTube do their thing. Uh, making tons of mistakes. I've got a bin full of old cast off bodies, prototypes that are made from really cheap wood and that kind of thing. A bunch of weird bent necks that, you know, didn't have truss rods in them because I felt like it wasn't uh, worthwhile. I got to teach myself how to make these shapes first rather than uh, something that's functional. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I guess uh, if you want to see me use more of this maple, let me know. Uh, I'm not against it. It's pretty precious to me though. So um, if it's going to go on a GGBO guitar, I'd like somebody to maybe consider buying it. 
Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say for today. Uh, I'm going to go for a run, get some groceries, and then uh, do a little bit of puttering around in my basement. And maybe I'll make a video showing you the horrible working conditions I have. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Bye-bye.